This one feels great. And the top line, like you said, is still really nice. I don't feel like I'm looking down at something clunky mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, and they feel great. Having the similar shaft is really nice because I know the flex point. And yeah, other than that, I think these are great. Anna, thanks a lot for joining us for an iron fitting today. We've already done a few steps that happened very early in the iron fitting. Uh, as far as Hannah's current clubs, she says she doesn't really hit them as high as she would like to. Uh, really, her descent angle, angle it's landing, coming into the greens a little shallower than she'd like. So we're really going to approach today with the goal of hitting a little bit higher. And I'm sure if we got a little bit more yardage, uh, probably wouldn't complain either, right? Mm -mm. Uh, so let's talk about what we did already though. We've measured her current clubs, found out they're a little bit shorter than stock, and again for uh, your height, having a little bit shorter iron does sound appropriate. And we also tested the line goal just by putting a vertical line uh, on the golf ball, and we actually see that whenever you hit, you have the toe of the club just a little bit lower than the heel. Now this could cause some shots to go off to the right, Usually, though, a good player, you're going to find a way to make it work. Uh, but having irons that are fit properly can just make it a little bit easier. So the next thing we want to do is actually test your clubs on the launch monitor and really just take a look at some of the different measurements of a launch angle, backspin, uh, that peak height, like you mentioned, descent angle, and just see how they are performing. So let's hit three or four shots with your seven iron and take a look. All right, so we'll take a look at the numbers in a minute. Uh, Hannah, as far as your current clubs, outside of the performance, just you know, how they feel when you hit them, how they look, is there anything about them that you, you do like or you don't like whenever we're can kind of take that into consideration when we're picking out new ones? I really like these clubs in the top line that they have because okay. they're really clean. Okay. Um, but I'm not really particular. I'm more into performance than aesthetics. Okay. And when you say cleaner top line, I'm assuming you mean just a little bit thinner, don't want something too big? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So there's a couple different uh, options we definitely have. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the performance of your current clubs though. We had three uh, pretty well struck ones. And you said uh, your normal carry for that club was 147-ish? Like 150, yeah. 150, okay. So we saw averaging 154, we'll call it, so uh, about right. Now if we take a look though, uh, we have three numbers we're really going to focus on. One's gonna be backspin, just how much rotation on the golf ball we have. Launch angle, the angle the golf ball's leaving the face relative to the ground. And then descent angle, the angle it's landing on, that's the one you know, we've talked about a little bit to start with. So you have two numbers that are actually uh, really close. We see your backspin number is at about 4,700. Uh, it's maybe a little bit lower than we'd like to see for your speed. We see ball speed at about 107. Uh, for your speed, rather see it probably closer to 52, 5,300. Okay. Um, maybe we can do that number of ways. We'll test out some stuff. We would like to see the launch angle a little higher as well. You're at 17. If we can get it at 18, maybe even 19, that would be great. Um, but really what you're describing uh, is what we're seeing up here as well too. Your descent angle is only 40. Now, if that was like your four iron, I would say that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we really want to see at least 40 with like all of your irons, but once you get into your mid irons, I'd rather, rather see that number uh, get closer to Me 45. Too. So <laughs> should make it a little easier to hold a few greens, right? Uh, so we've couple things we can do to accomplish that. If we can increase your ball speed, even if we don't change any of the numbers, that should help to make the uh, apex a little bit higher, a little farther down range. Typically that's going to increase uh, the descent angle, make it more vertical. And if by trying some different heads, maybe higher lofted, some different shafts we can try, if we can just get the launch angle and backspin up a little bit as well, the combination of those three uh, should really help us out. Cool. So the uh, first one that we'll test, take that one from you. First one we are going to test uh, would pretty much be like the current version of what you already had. We're actually even going to keep uh, the exact same shaft. Okay. So Mizuno MP223 has that nice thin top line like you mentioned. Probably the biggest difference you'll notice on this is just the blade length uh, from heel to toe is just a little bit shorter okay. than your JPX. But same exact shaft, just the, the newer version of it than you're currently, that you are currently using. So give me your feedback first, relative to yours. Um, like it, some things you don't like. No, I really like it. From the top, it looks really nice. Um, it feels solid, no complaints. Okay, awesome. Let's take a look uh, at the numbers. 
So uh, we do see ball speed came down ever so slightly, um, but that's fine. What I like is that we do see an increase in the launch angle in the backspin. So now your launch angle went from 17 with your current uh, all the way up to 19. So that's an awesome start. It's pretty much right where we want you to be. And now your backspin is starting to get where we want it to be. It's at about 5200. And we do have some options. Uh, we'll try that exact same head in a different shaft here coming up. Uh, but even though the ball speed dropped a touch, because we increased the launch angle and the backspin, uh, we're still keeping it right around that 150 number as far as distance, but now your descent angle's getting to a usable range. We're mm -hmm. at almost 43. So it's giving you a chance now uh, for two reasons. It's landing more vertical, so it's gonna give you a better chance of holding the green, and yes. you also have a little more spin on the ball. So that combination, uh, again, should make it a little bit easier to mm -hmm. get the ball to stop when it lands. Same exact head you just tested, just try out some different shafts, see if we can just improve upon those numbers ever so slightly. How does the shaft, uh, if any, does it feel any different uh, relative to the previous one? It just feels like it has a slightly different kick point to it, if that okay. makes sense. Um, sure. It feels a little stiffer, even though it probably isn't okay. actually. So yeah, I just feel like it has a little bit different flex point in my backswing. Okay. Yeah, it's all fair. It's like to get feedback again from the person actually hitting them. Uh, typically, the steel fibers, even though they both are 95 gram regular, tend to see they do play a little bit stiffer, how it's okay. going to result in ball flight can be different for everybody, but uh, that's why we test them. So let's do this then. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers and we'll test one more. But we obviously know the direction on that one uh, we didn't like too much. Uh, here's the good news though. We do still see, even with that uh, pull, which typically are going to come out a little bit lower, yes. we do still see a good launch angle. So that is uh, the good news. Even though they're starting left, we are actually still keeping that launch angle around 19. Uh, again, it could be a little bit because of the head having a little more loft as well too. Uh, but with that pull, we did see a big reduction in backspin down to 4,300. Uh, here's the good news. Um, even though the launch angle and backspin were down, the scent angle is still better than your current set. So I know the offline we don't love, uh, but we are at least moving the descent angle where we want. And yes. there's some more things we can do to try to dial in the direction. Uh, but we want to try one other setup here now. So what we're going to do next is actually keep that shaft that you're familiar with, the 95 gram uh, steel shaft. But we're going to go into a uh, ever so slightly bigger head and want to see what you think about that all right so now we are going to go up to the mizuno pro 225. so while this uh, will be the largest most forgiving iron in this line it's still super tiny i mean this thing in your bag is going to look like a blade yeah except it actually has some technology in there to help you out yeah i don't mind the look of those actually i still think they're really pretty especially from the top i still think they look really nice good and that was going to be my primary question for you is whenever you set it down does the yeah. top line still look good so it's good to hear uh so mizuno pro 225 looks like a blade except it's got some tech it's actually hollow uh, so that hollow body just helps the face flex a little bit more helps us uh, increase some ball speeds and with increasing the ball speed, we're also helping with you. That, that helps us to get that uh, peak height a little bit higher, hopefully get the descent angle a little better as well. Awesome. So Mizuno Pro 225, 95 gram lightweight steel. All right, so that one we like where they go. Tell me, uh, give me feedback on that though. Uh, uh, this one feels great. And the top line, like you said, is still really nice. I don't feel like I'm looking down at something clunky or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, and they feel great. Having the similar shaft is really nice because I know the flex point. And yeah, other than that, I think these are great. I like how they go straight. <laughs> Straightest one of the day, longest one of the day. Yeah. And descent angle is now right around 42. Okay. So it's again, uh, into the low 40s would be great. Uh, again, still love to see it even creep up higher and higher, but again, we're three shots in. So yeah. I'm sure uh, with a little bit more time actually utilizing them, we'd see that only even get better. But let's look uh, at the numbers now. And here's what I like. So ball speeds basically stayed the same with that club as they did with yours, which again, your clubs are only a generation old. So I'm not, yeah. not super surprised we didn't see uh, any ball speed gains. It'd be really common uh, for a lot of the people that walk in our doors, they come in with irons that are uh, five, like 10 generations yeah. old. Yeah. So 
really common to see five, even 10 mile an hour ball speed changes when you're only doing one generation change. Uh, it can happen, but it's not nearly as common. Maintain the ball speed, but now we've kept the launch angle ever so slightly higher, uh, about a half degree when we were done, but the backspin got up to about 5,300. So it's getting into the very bottom of that green range. Uh, and then again, that's allowing us to get our descent angle up to about 42. Uh, so it's at least giving us a chance now. It's landing a little more vertical when you do have those, say, pins tucked right behind the bunker. Uh, it's going to have a better chance of stopping when it does land. And on top of that, uh, it's only two yards offline. So I'm sure that's not, not hurting as well. <laughs> no. uh, so we have one more thing we need to do on that one because it sounds like that's the one you like. Mm -hmm. So we want to check the lie angle. Now we did see, we did see on yours that your lies were maybe ever so slightly uh, flatter yeah. than they would need to be. Now, not sure if, uh, again, that was done intentionally, but uh, that could be built in there a little bit just to help you not go left. So I could certainly understand why that might be the case. And then on yours, we are going to be going, uh, again, ever so slightly shorter. So kind of like you have been doing, just choke down just okay. a little yeah. bit. And let me just draw a line on that ball. So we always like to do the line angle test using just a vertical line on the golf ball. Okay. And then what that's going to do, it, it'll then take that line and pretty much imprint it onto the club face. Cool. So we don't have to worry about really how you hit the ground, any kind of you know, turf interaction, uh, any false readings that you might get if you're using a lie board. All right, so one swing, just like the last. Excellent. Now let's take a look. And we can see on this one that that line is pretty much vertical. Again, if anything, I might say it's pitched ever so slightly, but honestly for that one, uh, I'd pretty much just get you a standard lie, which in okay. Mizuno is typically a little bit flatter. Uh, and we can then also go just a little bit shorter like we had discussed. As far as grip, um, on your current irons, you pretty much just have... I have an Regular undersized, tour velvet. undersized okay. tour velvet, yeah. So we can go a little bit smaller if that's a preference as well, too. I uh, like them as small as possible. I have okay. baby hands. <laughs> Perfect. So we can definitely uh, order them either stretched or shorter, just like a standard old tour velvet, though? Yeah, probably a standard tour velvet and then stretched out. Okay. No fancy colors, though? We can change it up. You guys have pink? <laughs> We can always request it. Perfect. Yeah, we can do some different uh, color options, but really when it comes to the grip, uh, finding just a personal preference, you know, what you like really trumps everything. That's why yeah. we have cords, wraps, uh, firmer, softer, et cetera. So. Makes sense. Awesome. Any questions about these ones though? I don't think so. I really like them. Awesome. Well, I think uh, they're going to help you hold more greens mm -hmm. and obviously hit it a little bit straighter. We saw as well too. Um, I think it's only going to help you again, shoot some lower scores.